Hey everybody, Sarah here. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's video. If you are new here, welcome and thank you so much for tuning into this video. We have just started a new series on faith. So if you haven't already, make sure that you are subscribed so that you never miss another video. Make sure that you're following us on Instagram, on our ministry Instagram page and on my personal Instagram page so that we can connect. So for this week's video, this is gonna be kind of like a foundational video on our first series on faith. Um, when we're talking about faith, we first have to understand what faith is. And I just want to encourage you guys in this series because, hey, I'm on this faith walk journey like the rest of you guys. I'm not exempt. So go ahead and grab your Bibles. We are going to go to Hebrews, of course, when you're talking about faith. Hebrews, right? So we're going to go to Hebrews and we're going to actually go to chapter 10. And I'm just going to start reading at verse 35. It says, therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. So I'm just gonna stop right there really quickly and just put in a little caveat. So anytime you see the word therefore in scripture, you wanna see what it's there for. The author is almost always drawing your attention to what was stated in the previous verses. So it's important to go back and read what the author has just stated so we can get a full picture of everything that they're just talking about going forward. For the sake of this video and for time, that would be reading the whole chapter and I'm not gonna do that. It would be greatly beneficial for you to do it in your own time. But just kind of for like a little synopsis, the beginning of the chapter, the author was talking about Christ's sacrifice that was for once and for all and how since he is our great high priest, we can draw near with confidence and to hold fast the confession of our faith and so much more. Again, make sure you go back and read that for yourself. So the author is encouraging their readers to not throw away their confidence. You know, don't throw away your confidence. Don't throw in the towel because of persecution, because things are getting hard, because things are getting tough. And a beautiful thing that I love about that, that the author highlights, which is the first point for this video, there's a reward attached to your faith. There's a reward when you have confidence in God. If you give up, you'll never see it. You'll never receive it. You can only reap a harvest if you don't give up and if you don't grow weary. When we think, when we are going through this life of faith and walking through this journey of faith, we need to keep in mind that there is a reward at, at the end of this life that we have been promised. We've been promised an inheritance in Jesus Christ. So we have to keep our eye on the prize, right? We can't get caught up in what we see and what we don't see and the things that we experience in our hard times. We can't just throw away our faith and throw away our confidence because of the things that we see. We have to keep our eyes on the things that are above and not on these earthly temporal things that are going to perish one day. And the second thing that this author says that I think that is so interesting is that you have need of endurance. So endurance is built through trial. The thing that we so want to run from is the thing that is going to build our faith. So when you go through one trial after another after another, it builds your confidence. It builds up your ability to withstand. Just like when you go to the gym, you might have you may have started out at five or ten, but if you keep at it and you keep doing it, it's going to build your stamina. It's going to build your endurance. Or even if you think about it in schooling, when once you pass one test. You used to just be able to do one plus one. Now you can do multiplication and now you can do all these other fancy mathematic equations. But it's, you have to be able to endure the small things. And then once you endure the small things, God will give you more and he'll give you more. And as you go through things and trials and tests, not only is your endurance being built, but your faith is being built at the same time. So if you can trust God over here in the little, then you can trust him with this bigger test that comes on and this bigger weight that comes on. The thing is, but you need the endurance in order to receive what's promised, in order to receive the reward that we want to receive the prize, we have to be able to endure. So continuing on with the last few verses um, from chapter 10, verse 37 says, for yet a little while and the coming one will come and will not delay, but my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. So the third thing is we have to live by faith. Whether you're reading in the Bible app or in your actual Bible, you will see that this is a quote taken from a different passage of scripture. And this is taken from the Old Testament from Habakkuk. So things we have to live by faith. We're not to live by reasoning. We're not to live, live by our opinion or the opinion of somebody else. We're not to live by our strength. And it's interesting that the writer says that if we shrink back, if we don't live by faith, if we don't have endurance, then God has no pleasure in us in that faith is what preserves our soul. 
because later on in his letter in this in this letter it says that without faith it's impossible to please god if we're not living by faith and we're we're living by what we see we're being caught up in what we see we're being led by our feelings god's not pleased with that it is by grace through faith that we're saved so if we're not living by faith how is our soul being preserved see it's shrinking back lacking faith lacking endurance results in destruction but having faith preserves your soul so the writer states that the righteous one shall live by faith so that's where chapter 11 comes where the very first verse in chapter 11 he gives a definition he or she we don't know who wrote it gives a definition of faith and i'm going to read that from king james because that's what how most of us know it and for me personally that's just what makes the most sense to me and blesses me every time i read it or recite it to myself now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The thing is, faith is the substance. Not your common sense, not your opinion. Faith is the substance. Faith is the thing that you gotta hold on to. And faith is the evidence. You, you don't need material things to be your evidence for what you're hoping for. Faith is the evidence. Because the thing is, so faith is not wishful thinking. It is a confident trust in God that something far off, something in the future will come to pass. The thing that we can't see yet, that we're gonna get it, that we're gonna obtain it. The reward that I'm waiting on, oh, I'm gonna get that. That inheritance, I have faith that I'm gonna get that. Faith is trust and confidence in the eternal, all-knowing, all-powerful, trustworthy Father. God has proven himself time and time and time again to generation after generation. He has proven himself trustworthy. We can have faith and we can have confidence in him. But the thing is you have to have faith in him and not in you, not in somebody else, not in anything else. The problem is with our generation and our culture is not that we lack faith, we just lack faith in the right person. Trust in God, in him and the person that he's revealed himself to be. He's revealed himself to be a healer, to be a protector, to be a provider. You can put your weight on that. He may not move in the way that you think that he will, but he's gonna move. He's gonna move on his behalf for his children, on, on those who have placed faith in him. So yeah, that's all I have for this video, the foundational video on faith. And again, the three takeaways for this is that the first thing is when you're walking by faith, you need to keep your eye on the prize. Don't get distracted by what you see or what you don't see. Second thing is you have to endure. And lastly, live by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. From here on out, we're gonna go through some people in the Old Testament and the New Testament that walked by faith, that lived by faith, and we're gonna be encouraged by their stories and take away some things from them that we can apply to our lives today. So, and I hope that you guys, again, will subscribe so that you that you keep up with that and that you could be encouraged that in that as well. So tell me in the comment sections below, what is your favorite faith story in the Bible? Is it David and Goliath? Is it Abraham? Let me know what's your favorite faith story from the Bible. Make sure that you like this video, that you share it with someone that will be encouraged by it. And again, subscribe so that you never miss another video just like this one every single Wednesday. Until next week's video, grace and peace.